Hello my friends, it's a pleasure to have you watching this video about aesthetic crown lengthening and soft tissue design. I try to record in this video some details that it's almost impossible to catch just showing you pictures as I have been uh, posting in the previous cases. For this case, to solve this very smile, very high smile line, we start with the digital planning to set a new gum contour for this patient, but always checking in these drawings, the CBCT scan of the patient to know exactly where is the cementoenamic junction and how much of the crown is actually underneath this tissue. This way you can avoid some common problems uh, of this kind of surgery. The first tip I can give you is beveling the incision according to the thickness of the tissue. For thin tissues, do not bevel it. Go to a 90 degree incision. And for thicker tissue, you can go to a 45 degree beveling the tissue to have a better fit at the end of the surgery. Second tip, try not to raise the flap above the mucogingival line because you're going to have less influence of the muscular movements over the tissue, you're going to have tension in the sutures to a better settlement of this flap and you're going to have a better post-op for this patient. When you start the bone wearing, divide it in two steps. The first step, you go with a large round diamond bone in a handpiece and just wear the exostasy and let the bone to get thinner close to the root but do not touch the root because if you let this very thin piece of bone around the roots it make it easier for you to the second stage with the chisels or a high speed burn to take it out this part of bone without work too much time close to the root because it's a very sensitive part to work uh, and you always need to check how much of the bone you are taking out uh, to settle the new biological width for these patients. It's interesting as we change the beveling of the incision for each patient according to the thickness of this biotype, we also change the how much of the bone we take uh, making difference biological width for different patients, customizing it. For thicker biotypes, we let about 3 millimeters. For very thin biotypes, we let about 2 millimeters of measurements from the top of the crest to the new gingival margin. After the second stage, uh, with the high speed burn, you're gonna have some sharp edges at the bone crest. So you can step back, get again the very large round burn and get a smoother surface, a better anatomy, taking out the edges and get a better fit, a better anatomy of this uh, bone contour in the buccal plate. When you finish the bone contour and establish this new uh, biological width for the patient, you need to check the fitting of the flap and not uncommon you're going to notice that you have a different thickness in the papilla area than in the cervical margin of your flap. That happens because when you are beveling the tissue the incision is easier to do in the cervical margin than beveling it in the papilla area. So this thicker papilla, you can reduce the amount of the volume of it, uh, holding the papilla with a plier and wearing out the inside, the connective part of the papilla with a fine uh, diamond burn as you can see in this part of the movie. For the sutures, we like to let the knot to the palatal side First, because uh, we have a, a, a more aesthetic outcome and second, because I want a, a clear assessment of the buccal side when I'm going to do the refinement of the bone, 
the, the tissue contour with the lateral scalpel. So I don't have the knot in that position, avoiding me to, to touch out the contour of the tissue, as you can see uh, a little further in this video. Uh, we use a vertical mattress for this kind of sutures. The first part of the suture is responsible to, to give the, the tension of the flap to put in the right position. And the second part of the suture, it's responsible to proper position the point of the papilla. When you finish the sutures, we like to pressure the tissue for about five minutes to take it out of the blood cloth underneath the periosteum and to check the final position of the flap. And you're gonna find that you have a different position of the gum contour than you have planned before, than you did in the first incision. That happens because we change a lot the bone volume underneath the flap. So it's normal you to have this kind of difference at the end of the surgery. And the last tip I want to give you is to correct that with the lateral scalpel. Because you can safe have control in this new contour, this new refinement you can do on your tooth and in your gum contour proper position the zenity and proper giving the right shape at the end of the surgery. And that's it guys for 5 minutes video. It's all the tips I can give you for now. We have a lot to talk about this kind of surgery. I thank you all for watching this video through the end and I see you soon. Best regards from Brazil.